What's a multi? Uh, uh, so yes. exclamation Take point M-U-L-T-I is, is, is a multi-twitch link, which Maybe shows to everyone uh, together on a uh, s in the Can same window. So if you want to, there's a lot of people to watch on that menu. So you can pick off who you want to watch and who you don't want to watch by taking their names out of the link. And you can build yourself uh, one where you'll have, you know, me commentate and maybe like Flying Finn, Nemesis, Game with Pickles. Like okay, you want to see those POVs or balance, you know, some uh, blue four guys, some op four guys. It's entirely up to you, but Let's, this is just a list of everyone streaming French, the op so you can get some on the ground perspectives as I, you know, commentators use, depending on what's going on. Uh, I think we're okay. Yeah, you, you happy? Yeah, I'm having the same problem where I click on something and then press OK and it's just not letting me go there. So French is going to oh, platoon okay. lead. Dingo's going to... No, it's uh, Fred is going to platoon marksman. Uh, yeah, you one interesting names right there. They got their full 117s. Luso is platoon lead. We see him do it once in a while. Charlie Twig King down. taking no, marksman. Platoons only, please, right now. Everybody else in chat. And we're seeing the Matt team being, again, the Carl Gustav. Right, who is that individual who's having a problem joining in? And uh, RPG32. Uh, well, what is the issue you're having? Clicking on the slot I choose, then pressing OK, and there's no response. Which slot are you trying to go for? I uh, grabbed Alpha 1, the first thing I saw, I guess, that's squad leader. Alpha 1 squad leader, okay, that's... Is that on blue 4, did you say? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's currently taken for Zachary. That's me. That's, that's... You can't. Oh, okay. You you are you are in the slot. No, you, no, no one can push in yet because we've not got to that stage yet. Don't press OK or anything. Just wait. You can press OK if you want. Won't change anything. Um. Right. Now we're being patient. Four. You've got. Oh yeah. Don't use multi on your phone. Your phone cannot load all those bandwidth. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Lucid. It can't load Lucid, everything. You've got one minute. Go. Yeah, okay, I'm happy. Also, if you're on, uh, if you're on mobile data and you open up a multi-twitch link, you're going to destroy your data. I'm, I'm good. Okay, awesome. Let's uh, push to the uh, to the briefing. All right, let's see what they got set up here. 100 plus PVP for this one. I'm hoping uh, we'll get back to 120 in the NA branches. I'm ready. But I'm again liking how oh, we're no, gradually sure. getting bigger and bigger here. Oh. Don't worry, you got plenty of time to rejoin. Apparently, Wheaton's streaming. You didn't give me a link though, so that's fine. People, again, it's optional. People can uh, go stream what they want. Got some uh, Morse code right there. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful map. Beautiful. Oh, it's going to look even more pretty once you get in. Nice Morse mm. code. Hey, uh, I'm getting errors with my mags. Is it kicking you off That's the game? Yeah. I'm surprised you're getting errors already. We're not. All right, I'm going to go down there. Uh, I don't know what errors they're talking about here. I'm going to turn down the music just a hint. And let's go over what this round is all about. So Op4 is defending. We got these three black zones right here. This represents a uh, where an ammo cache is. The ammo cache can be destroyed in any particular order. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Blue 4 are going to start by this gas station. Not a lot of room for them to maneuver, though, so that'll all be taken up by time. Uh, this will probably, again, be a 50-minute round, but it might go all the way up to an hour. Uh, depends. So uh, we're on Halama Winter, which is a really nice, beautiful map. Uh, I think it's 10 by 10 or 8 by 8. It's 8 by 8. But op for it's going to be interesting because they have some statics and a single BRDM with the 14.5 millimeter that can shred those triple one sevens. But likewise, those triple one sevens can shred the BRDM and do a lot of damage with those 50s. So if I was op for I'd be curious to see what's here because obviously there's nothing on map, but this is uh, probably going to be a custom base. And someone was saying, hey, just wait till you push in. You'll see how quote unquote beautiful this map is. So I'm willing to bet there's probably going to be some custom fortifications here. So we'll see how things go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're just... Um waiting for uh their brief to be put down just uh, you know i there's only like four different types of missions that they do uh at least concept wise you know to keep things simple so actually yeah so there's caches there's sector um 
there's attack defense sectors, there's terminals, and then there's the single sector control, which is usually a three-way fight. And the variations can be one of the objectives has to be done one at a time, or they can all be done at the same time. Um, and then there's been a variation on cash destruction where for one round we did, uh, there was also a specific vehicle that the enemy team had to destroy. But otherwise, uh, actually there's been a fifth. There was one capture the flag that was done with that beached carrier, but I haven't seen anything else used. Uh, nothing else comes to mind on the top of my head. And there we go. So we're going to go ahead and hit F1 to make that menu go away. I'm going to hit P and J to, because uh, I always forget which one lets me uh, see tracers, because I'm a bellin. And we got some nice snowfall going. It's also lit pretty well. It's a little bright for NVGs. Let's go ahead and look at what Op4 has here. So looking below, it looks like they have two transport gases. They've got the two static cords and they got the BRDM right here. Also, I'm not seeing any of their symbols. That's interesting enough. I'm, I, I don't know that much about spectator mode itself, so I don't know if it's something they intentionally do, but this is going to make it a little difficult for me to track people. I have to rely more on that left side roster, but that's okay. Uh, so, yeah, we got them pretty well hidden in the uh, map here. We got kind of a white and black uh, flooring here, so that green isn't going to be too good for it, but it's on the darker side, so it's not the worst thing in the world here. But yeah, no, this is this is a pretty beautiful uh, winter map. I do like this a lot. But looking over at the blue four side over here, we have everyone set up. A few different flags here. A lot of transport vics, so blue four can get into the AO quicker. And then the two triple one sevens. All right. Ah, sorry, my uh, my left eye is twitching. It. It hurts. It hurts. But looking at the uh, cash site over here, so we have three bunkers and then a... <laughs> I wonder where the cash is, guys. I mean, hmm. That's a bit of a funny thing. I was expecting more of a little custom position, but, you know, three bunkers here isn't the worst thing, but, you know, fighting against these forests is going to be a little difficult here. Meanwhile, looking at the other cash sites... Uh, looking down to the south, we have a cache in this building, which... How is this thing not Arma in itself? What? How is... That should be blown up. And they're gonna blow it up, so... I'm confused. I don't know, maybe at the end of save start, it'll arm itself and destroy itself, which would suck. But that's... It's like super obvious, you know what I mean? And Von Sticker coming in with a rate of 12. Von, what were you just playing? And we got the other cache in a nice uh, smaller building right here. On a little less of the inconspicuous side. So if I was Op4, I would... Pick two cache sites to defend. And from there... Uh, probably have some teams try to go behind blue four lines and hit them in the rear again, because that seems to have been working really well for uh, both ops here. Bit of armor three came to the hill. Nice. Listen, Liru, what would a plebeian like you know with only your 44 hours of testing when they clearly test maps for 45 hours of testing? Well, you're right. Now, uh... <laughs> I almost called you Nemesis. You're right, what's that? I mean, clearly, I, um, I've um i met my match in terms of uh, testing here. Because I... I don't... It, that has to have physics, right? Because it's destroyable. So why... I I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to say five bucks and that thing will blow itself up when a uh, safe start ends. 
Either way, I don't know. Um, also looking, I don't think any of these guys have uh, night vision, but since I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing them, you might see me go to uh, thermal a few times uh, just to keep track of all the players and then, you know, referencing them in the map section and whatnot. Oh, also blue four has uh, 762 for this. Uh, so they've got the... Um, 20 round I actually I don't know if there's a 20 or 30 round magazines it might be 30 round but um yeah we're seeing some uh scars being used interesting and then back here what's uh op for's main weapon uh I think it's going to be AK's but is it 74's no it looks like um AKM variants here Interesting. So Op4 already pushing a team out. They're going to probably go uh, counter offensive. We already saw Gaz get pulled out. Uh, it's going to probably take some guys on that mount. Now it's a little hard for me to get into the topographical view here because if I scroll out too much, we kind of lose it. But if I was Blue 4, I'm going to be honest, I would just take everyone on the northern side. We just go north to south and clear everything as we go along and just be speedy and concise about it. Uh, because, you know, Op4 would probably try to send teams to try to find where Blue Force is coming from, but Blue Force, since they have all those transport VIX, just literally take this route, come around, deploy right here, and then make your battle line. Especially since you've got forest, uh, forested areas right here, which will take you right into this area. Now, of course, you don't want to go into these open kill zones, but I mean, you know, you got all this forest to get up to this first objective. You got all this nice forest to get up to your second objective. And then, you know, you can also put a team out on the uh, right side right here, which would be the uh, west. Uh, and they can cover you as you just march your units through forest and thus a lot of cover. Now, what I would be concerned about, though, if I was Blue 4, is because it's dark, uh, Op 4 might put some guys in some of the pine trees and uh, make some really nasty ambushes here. So we'll have to see how things go. Again, it's a little tough for me to spot guys, but we can watch them on uh, thermals to uh, get some good eyes here. Now, I am actually going to abort and load back in just to see if that's a, uh, a glitch on my end. Because without those markers, it's a little tough to tell um, who's who. And I want to, you know, try to show things uh, to the best of my ability to you guys to encourage you to keep watching or playing, but... Looking back, I, th I think it's intentional because I'm not getting any symbols when I look up there, so... Oh, nope, there they are. All right, so it was just a glitch. Cool. Whew. All right, I did not want to have to deal with that because, you know, we rely on these symbols to tell us, you know, who's who. We got the names popping up as well. Thank fuck. I was really scared because, <laughs> you know, if one blue four guy gets intermingled with all the up four guys, there's no way we'd really be able to tell in this lighting who's who. So there we go. Also, yeah, I love how the uh, the map is called Silent Night as well. <laughs> now, if I was Op4, again, I would pick two areas. I'd set up defenses. I would probably forego this one. Uh, I would... I'd probably put a charge in that uh, one building. Uh, does it have any... Yeah, I would put it, like, in back there. And I would have a demo guy just camp in a pine tree. And when people went in there, because this is, it's obvious where it was, I just have the charge go off. Easy, you know? But we don't really see traps like that get made. And push comes to shove, I'd rather be up here commentating than sitting down there for 45 minutes for a single trap, you know? But either way, we're having independence. Uh, looks like they're going to abandon the northern cache and they're going to go for the middle cache and the southern cache to defend. So I'm glad that Op4 is picking only two caches here because that means they're going to have uh, less of their forces spread thin. Uh, and that way, when Blue4 decides to do their steamroll, at least I'm assuming Blue4 is going to do a steamroll here, uh, it won't be as bad. Uh, when Op4 starts losing heavy numbers. 
but I like seeing some of these squads like uh, this one right here branch out. I really don't know what they're going to go for. This is all a Bravo. And I, I don't know. See, I'm not going to lie. This would have been a better cash site than that for this customized area. But who knows? All right, Larry. Thank you for the 50. Thanks for everything you've done for me. And hope you have sweet dreams. Seriously. Ah, it does put a smile on my face. Have a good FNF night, Liru. I'm going to bed. Smile. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. What's that? I think they are 762 20 round magazines just because of the shape. So we'll see. But blue four with 762s to even that advantage, that would be interesting. But there's Larry. Larry being uh, one of the newer sub Santas, he's crawling up because you see him uh, in third place now for all those subs, but he's been a legend this month, so a lot of those gift subs that came out were from him. So, you know, op four, they've got guys set up right here. I think that they're going to go try to do a counter offensive here, but who knows? I'm going to be really curious to see what Blue Force plan is and what Op4 is going to settle on in terms of where they're going to put their defensive lines and where they're going to set up those 50 cows. Because I'm going to be honest, uh, all three, well, maybe not the middle one, but at least these two towns, uh, they're going to require a lot of 360 to cover. The northern one, not so much. we got a nice little perimeter going right here. Uh, there's just such a nice Christmas vibe to this, but... You know, it's right next to a forest and, you know, that can be tough, especially since the forest has a little bit of the high ground going out. So uh, just a lot of places, uh, Blue Fork can, you know, set up machine gun teams, take a few shots, kill a guy and then pull back and set up somewhere else. Uh, so I understand why they're ditching that spot as well. But I mean, this town, there's a lot of places Blue Fork can cover. So Op4 is going to have to pick a very thin defensive line here. Uh, but, I mean, this internal compound isn't too bad. You got a nice little perimeter fence here. Uh, I assume these buildings are enterable. Yep. Uh, but, I mean, I'm really worried about what's going to happen to that cache once safe start ends. Because if Op4 uh, gets that cache destroyed because it gets armored, because it's clipping into the wall, when safe start ends, they're going to have to quickly reposition to a different cache site. And that's just going to be messy. It feels like it's gotten a little bit brighter. Just a touch. We did notice, uh, I think it was last week, that there was a mission that, uh, it was uh, Nemesis's mission. It started very dark, but uh, it was the Zargabad one. It started dark, but it got a little brighter and a little brighter through safe start. And I, I really liked that uh, prospect where, you know, you start out dark and then it just, you know, goes in the morning and you get the lights on. I thought that was pretty cool, but... Op4 set up in a truck right here might go counter offensive. Uh, we also have guys on foot going counter offensive. That's not the smartest idea because there's a lot of ground to cover. Uh, in the first stop, a counter offensive by independent was a good idea because there were only two Seven predictable routes that Blue Fork could go now. because, you know, Dude, attack a stand I mountains. Remember but that I have Prime and that Twitch is a thing. Three. <laughs> um, so, you know, independent had the easy ability to go out and counter attack, but. Op4 here, there's just way too much possibility, and I I just don't see it. I don't see it. But Ruby, thank you for the 21-month resub. You have remembered that you have Twitch Prime, and you decided to give it to me. Thank you so much, my man. I hope you keep enjoying the operations, and I hope you get a kick out of this one. Ah, uh, I'm talking too much, because, uh my body will intake air and then I'll get hiccups and I'm hoping you're not hearing them <laughs> but uh, I I hate my hiccups Whew. one other thing I want to point out is um, these two warehouses they have that little upper area and I personally like this is one of my favorite spots to put units down and I've seen TSB members time and time again go up and use those and it's been messy but in that case, it was Scandi Recon, because now the official TSB group is, uh, I gotta start differentiating, but. 
That's A-OK. -okay. Meanwhile, blue four starting to mount up into vehicles. We got two forming up to the south. I think they're going to do a pincer movement. We also have one that's pulled up next to a gas station with naked Joe McGee as, uh, I don't know. I don't get it. So, again, my, uh, my thoughts are going to be where is Blue 4 going to attack from? Independ uh, excuse me, Op 4 has decided that they're going to defend the southernmost and the central cache. And... You know, where is Blue 4 going to divide their units? Are they going to do a battle line going out? Because every time I see this shape, it's just easy. Battle line down. Especially when you have all the forest to maneuver with, so... Seeing these guys up on the corner usually means they're going to be scouts. So, for example, I know Twi um, Twig King, he's one of the marksmen, so he's going to go off with a buddy and try to find a good vantage point. But... Ah, accidentally right-clicked on the map and it forced me to hold his own. But where Blue 4 will deploy their units if they're going to go from the south up or from the north down... From this angle, though, I assume they're going to go south, which I wouldn't have done personally because that's a lot less distance that they have to kind of sneak in here compared to this one, where they had a lot more, like literally a kilometer worth of room to sneak in. But this one, this is only about 400 meters tops. So Blue Four is going for a pincer movement. Not the smartest decision, but I can see why in their circumstance. Uh, but it looks like they're committing both vehicles to the southern flank. Hmm. So what's going to end up happening is this force is going to... move. Hello? That was a 5-5-6. Five, five, I guess it was in the back of one of the Vix. That was a little ominous. But there's no marker of a player. Maybe, uh, maybe there's a ghost. I'm trying to find them. So we got four transport Vicks going one way, both triple one sevens heading south, and we got four transport Vicks going down here. But now we're seeing a further split. <clears throat> They're not keeping together. I don't know what that's about. But up for. Uh, I think they're going to try to control the force around this objective. We got the BRDM. No, this is a truck pushed out. They're trying to hold that one position. Uh, so that's going to initiate contact with that southern group early unless they really ride the median. Like they're going down this MSR and then they're going to ride it off the side. That's not the worst idea in the world, but it's going to be a tough route because it's it's foresty, you know? So this is all of Charlie that's pulled down uh, right here to defend this area. Meanwhile, Blue 4, we have all of Charlie coming down. We have all of them. We have a Delta Squad lead, Delta 3, and the vehicles pulling down. Platoon HQ is going off on his own. Alpha and a Bravo team are going on these other vectors. I think they're trying to get unified here, so I guess Platoon is scouting. But French is in there. He's blue for platoon HQ. This is a very messy formation here. But I think um, I think these guys are going to regroup. So platoon is going to recon. Alpha with Bravo is going to be the northern pincer. And then Charlie and the Delta teams are going to be the southern pincer. And we keep hearing a 5-5-6 five, five, shot. It's weird, but... Now we're having a small another break off. Charlie is going to go further south and the Delta teams are going to stick with the vehicles and be the main assault. Now, the fear here is Blue 4 is now overextending their forces and breaking them apart too much because now this entire Charlie squad might not have any issues engaging uh, if they run into Blue 4 Charlie, for example. I don't know. I don't really like the deployment on either side, to be perfectly honest. But I like Op 4s a bit more because they at least have guys fanning out to check to see where Blue 4 is going to send their troops. But I, I take that back. I kind of like Op 4s deployment. I just... Uh, I can understand why they didn't do the Northern Cache. Like, thinking about it more and more, the fact that, you know, there's a lot of room up here for Blue 4 to deploy, and the fact that the forest is right there and they get right on top of it. I get it. 
and then this being a nice open area to put a few guys again i get it too uh especially since you can lock down the forested area around it it's just there's a lot of units kind of out and about that I feel like instead of being somewhere, they should be contacting guys that are doing recon and all these guys should be mounted in a vehicle ready to maneuver around somewhere instead. And now we're seeing the Delta teams break off from the vehicles, which are now heading to Charlie. And they're going to go around to the top one. I don't know. This is a really weird formation. In the meantime, though, let's look and see where we can find TSB. So TSB is part of Charlie 2. And where's Scandi Recon? Scandi Recon is in Alpha 2. So Scandi Recon is a specific division within TSB of just the Scandinavian players, though NAFS has been an honorary Scandi Recon member. Uh, and then the rest of TSB, which is the newer group for Friday Night Fights, they're uh, on their own, led by uh, Iceberg, who's taken the community role slot for uh, TSB. So now we're seeing Blue 4 doing some dismounts up here, playing it cautious. I, I think the biggest mistake I'm seeing right now is the fact that both vehicles are going to one single squad. At least send the vehicle up to the northern pincer, because again, it all it takes is one AT guy to take out both Vix and lose that asset. So it feels like a little bit of a squander, but also these guys are not going to be able to pull proper security for both of those vehicles. One vehicle, absolutely. One team on the left side, one team on the right side, it's fine. But both, especially since they're being brought into the forested areas over here, it just... I don't get it. I don't get it. And the cash, I guess it didn't get armored. But did it at least get, like, knocked back into the building, or is it still exposed? It's still exposed, that's so weird. It's like literally on the door, like that's, ugh, it's so weird. Cause that thing's supposed to have physics and explode. So we have some op four guys mounted up over here, uh, watching for a potential southern push, which again I would expect because, you know, a flank, uh, just a, a full top down attack would be better than a than a full. Squ uh, platoon pushing in from the flank because again the box of op 4 spawn was a big rectangle covering these three caches so if you get all your guys up on one side you can just do a small platoon battle line and cover everything so flank attacks again to be expected plus uh blue four wants to stick to these forests to maneuver because if they get caught out in open areas then uh, op 4 can easily uh, tear them up but we're seeing a big dismount over here. This is Alpha. No, this is the Delta teams. They're playing as a squad element. Interest. I don't think I've ever seen a Delta squad play as a squad. Usually it's just the Delta teams going to vantage points with those machine guns in the AT. But that's a very powerful weapon squad to keep together. So that's an interesting tactic. And then you have everyone else that's dismounted up here and they're just being cautious to push up to that first objective. Now, the real question is going to be if Blue 4 can still get around all the Op 4 guys and bypass the Charlie squad push down here and get to this position. But we have another line of Op 4 guys holding that far flank. So somewhere in this sector, Op 4 is going to catch wind of Blue 4. And that was another gunshot. And now Op4 knows that Blue Force here because that was a 556 five, gun. So, so much for that advantage. But uh, now Op4 at least knows that there's something down here because that wasn't one of any of their fucking guns. So, nice. Don't you love it when uh, you have that one guy that uh, discharges his gun? See, normally if this was a TSB op and these were AI, I'd send one or two guys to go check that out. But in a PvP situation, these guys now know that they're here and knowledge, I hate to quote reading Rainbow or no, it's it's G.I. Joe. Knowing is half the battle. That cannot be understated in Friday Night Fights because 
if you know where your enemy is going to attack from, you can set up a defensive line and wait for them to come to you, especially if you're the defending faction, and then catch them in an open area, let your machine gun tear them apart, and you can get three or four kills right out in the open. And it's that level of PvP. We saw it in the last round. Two guys stopped an entire push by a numerically superior force, and that was lost in the blink of an eye. Now I'm seeing a further split by the Delta team. Some guys watching West, some watching South. And we're watching this force now come up, so... I mean, right now it's just stalling for time. There's still gonna be about another 10 minutes of maneuvering here. It's not gonna be by much, though. Uh, if this is a 50-minute round... Blue Four is not going to have a lot of time to get on top of these positions, so this might be an hour-long round, but even so. It's going to be messy. So we have Standers coming down here. I guess he's trying to look for where that Blue Four gunshot went off. But these guys now getting really thinned out here. If they wanted to be super cautious, they could just ride down here. But we might see Standers come up and get a kill or two. We're seeing a good formation. A decent fire team wedge formed right there for a moment. But Stanner still doesn't know. Oh, this is TSB. Oh, God. I don't think Stanners has uh, spotted any of them yet. He thinks he might have, but there was no one in that sector. Audrey had already moved off, so instead he's going to go left. So we're seeing now Op 4's Charlie team. Since someone discharges gun on Blue 4, they know something's down here. So now they're sending their force. And the first bout of PvP is probably going to be up there. But look at this. The Op 4 a, uh, This is the Marksman. So he has a spotter right here. They're coming around. They're in the belly of the beast because this is all the Delta team guys with the heavy machine guns. <laughs> oh, that's... And they have no idea. That's the best part. They have no idea that there's about 15 to 20 dudes right here and they're going to walk away, but... ay ay ay. So TSB has a large group tracking them. Then again, I don't think Op4 knows... Op4 doesn't know exactly where Blue4 is. They know that there was a gunshot and there is something over here, but I guess TSB is doing the Force Recon roll, but at the same time... They are being chased down. We've got admins of FNF over here. Koax a good player. Gorski is a good player. Wreck is another good player. Stanners is a good player. Pierce, I mean, these are some vets. And I don't mean to throw TSB under the bus here, but I think they are a little outmatched. Both by tactics, veterancy, and uh, numerical. I mean, with this formation, I, I think Op4 is just guessing here, but it's turning into a really good box-in. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but they're about to be walked up on. Maybe the piano will give them some help. But I, okay, I will say this. They're at least pulling some good fucking 360 here. All right? They're not watching the exact eastern route, but this is better 360 than I've seen most other groups do. So again, give him the benefit of the doubt. Mox might actually see some movement in a second. But Russ is uh, exposed here. Pierce might have just spotted him. Yep, Husky is now going aggroed. And they're now looking around to try to see what's going on. And they're pulling around instead. I'm going to quickly look over there. You, you hear the triple one seven coming down. Uh, Marksman and friend left that area. And now Stanners is also coming up close. I'm going to go back into free cam here. Stanners has definitely gotten eyes on on some of these guys. Probably Russ. Bruce, Russ. But yeah, now Op4, they're getting in the trees. And they're trying to see how many Blue 4 guys are around here. Oh, my babies are about to get slaughtered. And I don't think Blue 4 has any idea that they're here. Mox went prone, but he's already been prone. We're not seeing any exact shots getting lined up yet.
Oh, my babies, no. No, they're in the open field. Will Op4 take the shot? That's a really good bunching. And they don't. They let my babies live for now. They might run into uh, in Stalingrad Sets here, though. Now. Oh, my babies. They're the bait squad as the rest of the group moves off the MSR. Oh, my babies. My babies, no. <laughs> Outcast, thanks for the 13 month resub. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. The lion sleeps tonight. Uh, are we away? <laughs> Jesus. Well, thank you, my man. Hope you keep enjoying the obstacle playing and watching. Hope you're enjoying Friday Night Fights. And I hope you get a kick out of this one. Indigo and Arcor. Arcor is the head honcho of Friday Night Fights. Indigo, one of the admins. Oh my god, and Mox is gonna run right up to him, seeing the rocks and going, Hey, yeah, this is a good thing to cover to have. Oh, and this is the, uh, this is the AT. Oh, and they just saw Mox. Oh my god, guys. No way. No fucking way. <laughs> Thank God for fucking Audrey Hotto. I didn't even notice he was here. There's the double taps going on. Oh, thank God. Now they're getting shot in the back of the head. Russ taking that AT launcher. Audrey Hotto immediately returning fire. Trying to get us. Oh, ho, ho, my babies. My babies. Oh, so they know the jig is up. I'm sorry I shouted. I got... I got excited, Mr. 21 kill streak, saving the TSB ducklings, and now the rest of Op4 Charlie is going to wonder why their Delta 4 team just died. And now they're pushing contact, and now a real firefight's about to begin. Looking at the rest of this area here, still not a lot going on, still a lot of maneuvering done by Blue 4. Prozzy giving a double tap on an already dead body, but he doesn't know that, so it's A-okay. Arcor, I doubt he's gonna wake back up, but they took his guns. <laughs> I love it. And now some blue on blue going on, uh, as uh, the rest of uh, the blue four force now coming in. Looks like they're able to uh, recognize it. Uh, Staff and B, AK Stalingrad, uh, getting caught in position, getting double tapped by Moxie, and now my babies are going to get some licks in. Pierce, however, catching Venator and Tarnafok out in the open. Venator goes down. Tarn is none the wiser, though. Tarn, your battle buddy just went down, your forehead. Audrey Hotto, however, saving Tarn by killing Pierce. And now we're seeing this nice little concave as two teams push up to take on Charlie. This is not what Op4 wants because Op4 doesn't have the numbers advantage. Blue 4 does. And if Blue 4 is losing guys needlessly, um, excuse me, if Op4 is losing guys needlessly like this, that is not good. Because that will just give Blue 4 an even bigger numbers advantage. But it looks like these guys know what is up. We're seeing some smoke grenades being popped and some guys falling back. But we're also seeing some blue on blue going on between Op4 as well. And we're seeing some shots in the back as they try to pull back. Just a massive concrete. Whoa! Oh, massive ragdoll there. Audrey Hotto up on two kills. Those other two didn't count, but he got the downs on him. Might catch dead out of the open here. There's the spray. Knocks him to his feet and knocks him out and gets that kill. Audrey Hotto on three, technically five kills now because I'm, I'm crediting him with those. And manages to catch that other guy out in the open. Helps whip an assist to knock that guy out. Amazing. So Blue 4 has taken the Matt team weapon for Op 4. That's going to help him out to try to find this BRDM to destroy it. BRDM now pushing up. They do not know that the two 117s are up here though. And those two 117s can easily massacre that BRDM with those 50 cals. So it's going to be a job on who catches who first. But even if the BRDM gets the first shot on one Vic, the second 117 cannot come up and knock it out. So, whew, a very 
I'm pleasantly surprised with TSB here. I'm glad that my ducklings didn't get massacred. Instead, they have the big bad op for on the run. And wow, Audrey Hotto with his eyes is able to basically save my ducklings. <laughs> Uh, it was three weeks ago. Audrey Hotto had a total of 21 kills. Only 19 were credited, though. The other two, um, he got two guys down and they bled out, uh, but it didn't give him the kill score for it. But he does have the official Friday Night Fight record for most kills in a round. So anyway, BRDM caught out of position here, started engaging one of the triple one sevens here. But now one of uh, that triple one seven that engage is now pulling down. It's just going to take a lucky 50 cal or 14.5 millimeter shot to uh, basically knock out the gunner. Now, advantages and disadvantages of these vehicles here. Uh, the BRDM has the bigger caliber. 14.5 uh, is bigger than the triple one seven. But the triple one seven has a hundred round magazines for its 50 cal while the uh, BRDM only has a 50 round magazine. So that triple one seven still pushing. Uh, also shot a, two wheels out and has shot the engine out of that Vic. They've reloaded though. Also, the BRDM has a little bit of a weaker armor than the triple one seven, but I think they disabled the gun. The driver hasn't noticed yet and that driver just made that Vic a sit and duck, and there's the kills. So the BRDM wins that fight due to uh, miscommunication by the driver and gunner here. That 76, so both Vicks also have 762, uh, but that 762 will not penetrate, so. BRDM disabled, but Blue 4 lost a uh, triple one seven there, but now we have the other triple one seven coming up to avenge its brother. 50 cal uh, penetrating in. And yep, now we're seeing the crew getting shot to shit inside. So when you engage these vehicles, you want to aim for the turret and under it, because that's where the gunner is, and then the front driver uh, viewports to kill the driver. But the gunner is the most important. So anyway, op for it. They're pulling back, I think, to get in their gas that they pulled into here to drive back up to their main force. So far, Blue 4 has the advantage. They still got one triple one seven up uh, and fully capable. Uh, they killed a, got a lot of free kills here. They got the uh, Delta Team gunner killed. So that means there's going to be less AT for the Blue 4 guy to deal with. However, it's not that big of an advantage because op for oh, some lightning. Sexy. Uh, Op4 does have RPGs in every squad, whereas Blue4 only has uh, disposable AT. So there's still a major AT threat that uh, Blue4 will have to contend with. Meanwhile, we're hearing some Grenadier rounds going off, uh, probably by Hippie. Yep, he does have the Grenadier weapon. And he's been popping that into Blue4, sighting some of these guys out. I don't think he's getting any uh, fruits of his labors here, though. Uh, no kills, and uh, Blue 4 now know that he is there. And they're firing his general direction. Well, we're seeing a big concave here by Op 4. Uh, we could potentially see what happened uh, to that one Op 4 team happen to uh, Blue 4 guys here. But this is the Delta teams for uh, Blue 4. So they've got the heavier weapons. They've got the 240 Bravo. They've got the AT right. Um, not AT rifle. Uh, the Carl Gustav as well. But this many people coming around. Rigel coming in first. Uh, he can do a lot of damage. Also, that Northern Cache has been taken out. So he's running up. He's gonna aim for severe first. Two to the back of the head. He just Hillary Clinton severe and Hudson and Drake are none the wiser. Rigel coming up. Gets one double tap. Hudson turning around to wonder what's going on. And Rigel just scored a triple kill. And now he's getting shot at by Bluck. But that is one MG team already down. And Rigel firing back. But that's all friendly. So I think these guys are now going to hear that audio period. Boston going down. The Carl Gustav gunner. And Wheaton and Cyrus are in trouble. But we are seeing... Nope, there's some rounds going right off. Some flares being popped as well. Uh, that was... I think Cyrus getting a drop there. But yeah, these guys are getting surrounded. Some really good spacing by Op4 to get around here. Uh, and Wheaton is crippled. Cyrus hiding in the tree here. But yeah, we just saw the mirror opposite here of uh, what happened with Op4 earlier. And it is still anyone's game. Uh, 
Berg just ran out of ammo there. He had Wheaton in his sights, but gotta keep track of your ammo here. And Ball Out is, uh, Ballot, excuse me, he's uh, running in, but let's see. Goatlin's come up. Just double tapped Boston. Just double tapped Wheaton. Cyrus also getting shot by Bluck. And that's the not for encirclement right now. We still have Gastel and Ballot coming, but ouch. Meanwhile, uh, Charlie team, their three guys are pulling around over here. Blue Four is getting a big concave over here, though, but we'll have to see what uh, Op4 is able to loot if they're able to take that Matt team weapon and whatnot. Uh, also, the MG from one of those Delta teams. And we see Ballot uh, trying to get some shots in, but he is prone, not really being mobile. He needs to get up and move real quick. Pops a grenade to play defensive, manages to hit block. That's the power of that 762 rifle. Just a few to the chest will knock out your opponent, but Bluck could still wake back up. So Ballot now running to the right and said he opts to hide behind this rock. Uh, his grenade he threw was a smoke grenade, and we have uh, Shadow locked here, hiding behind some trees, waiting to hear some footsteps. Gastel here also trying to get some licks in, but he is being tracked by Goatland, who is another really good player. More lightning. Uh, Goatland, wow, lucky headshot back in the head. And that knocks out the uh, Gastel who had that 240 Bravo. So we might see uh, Goatland go for an upgrade here. I don't think he noticed he got the kill. No, he does not give some suppression. <laughs> Make sure that he's dead with those uh, double taps to the head. And look at the big concave blue four is going for here. But they are running out of time. Uh, we could potentially see a 15 minute warning called in 10 minutes. Uh, but I think this is going to be an hour long round. So we probably won't see that for another 20 minutes. But even then, blue. <clears throat> excuse me blue four uh running low on their time here but again it is falling to the pvp still anyone's game so ball out might catch shadow out of position gets a headshot on him also shooting at block gets the headshot on him too two beautiful kills by ball here getting a little bit back here but goatland he's gonna hear those gunshots and he will go hunting So Ballot blending in to the back of that tree. Goatland playing this cautious here. You're literally just looking at little black specks here. Goatland not seeing Ballot there as he moved because again, that tree contrast is just too much. And Blue Ford setting up their forces really, uh, really well right here. So Goatland again, being very twitchy, trying to make sure he doesn't get pinned down with those headshots. Ballot meanwhile, think he just spotted Goatland. Yes, he did. Now he just has to wait for the right moment. This is that moment. Ballot. He reloads. Mm, waited a little too much right there. Goatland now turning around and spraying. Getting a few shots over, keeping him suppressed. Ballot's going to run out of ammo real quick because that's a 20 round magazine. There he goes, darting in those trees to reposition. Really good call there. And a few other op four guys are starting to take note. Twig King coming in. He is the marksman, though. He's got to be careful. That gun is not good for this CQC, but Ballot needs to make sure he doesn't get tunnel visioned, thinking uh, that Goatland is the only guy here. So he's going to get in a standoff with Goatland. Goatland putting some GL out. And it was a lightning GL round. Interesting. But no, that was um, probably a random up for uh, GL round for a flare. And now we have Twig King coming around. You don't really want to put the marksman out there. He spotted these two bodies. Ballot might hear his footsteps. But Goatland's coming up this uh, forested route here. Twig might actually catch ballot out of position wow oh and he quickly switches the marksman rifle but goatland has run up oh and ballot oh wow goatland getting incredibly lucky right there and now twig running up to see that uh goatland's gotten the kill oh that's unlucky for about i mean he he got uh accidentally pincered by two guys but he would have gotten goatland killed but um Twig saving him just by running up to the contact. Clever girl, yeah, right? Anyway, we just saw Oddball suppress up into this building. Uh, managed to knock out uh, 2,600. Brody, not the best idea to go on the same window that you just took fire from because they're already looking at that window. But some Grenadier rounds coming up here too. And Blue 4 is now making their push on this position. And it looks like they have recovered and repaired the triple one seven that was damaged yep so both triple one sevens uh are still capable now and they've split off to two-man crew those vix so that's gonna 
just be even worse for Op 4. So we're seeing some individual firefight skirmishes up here. Bob Winchester and Thule, two good players as well. Sky Online, also a decent player. But Dooley, he's gonna try to uh, camp out Bob to come to him. But I'm loving the mix of these major and minor skirmishes because you honestly don't know which one's gonna be the important one, which one's gonna be the uh, bad one. But um, Flying Finn trying to get some shots on Sky Online. To clarify what I just said, um, every firefight counts. One guy could easily kill 20 dudes. We've seen it. But Bob Winchester accidentally overextending too far, runs into an entire squad of blue four, gets knocked down, and he did have AT. Op four needs to start uh, trying to figure out what AT they have on station to deal with this, uh, these triple one sevens. But I don't think they know that these triple one sevens are down here uh, in this position. They do know that they're to the south, unless their BRDM didn't get a radio message out, which is highly likely anyway. Uh, so. Op 4, they got to keep their AT uh, close to the chest here because they have already lost that Matt team gun. So Blue 4, uh, this is Scandia Recon, clearing out these buildings. And Blue 4, we do have a man down right over here. They're going to start skirmishing with guys. So we do have an Alpha team for Op 4 down here. Could potentially push uh, this southern spot. Geo round landing close to defense. Uh, Devincer, that would be their uh, team leader, who is Cobra. Uh, he's lobbing some GL rounds over here, but Jello and Misu uh, have heard those shots, and they've set up a defensive line right here to try to spot any movement that comes around at that angle. Triple One Seven is now pulling in. Uh, the guy that was with two uh, 2600 uh, has died, but 2600 woke back up. And again, if there's AT up here, Ew, Wombats! Missing that AT shot. That is unfortunate. Wombat, I've seen him make really good AT shots in the past. That's not the case. So he's made these vehicles aggro. Uh, freaking out over the uh, RPG round going by. So they're now basically coming through and just suppressing random areas. Trying to form a distraction here. But the fact that they're pushed out overextending on their own is a little concerning here. Uh, because eight, uh, the heck was that? Oh, that was AT being fired from the Alpha team, uh, at G Legs' is Vic, but I just won't want to see the, I don't want to see these Vicks come up and overextend and just run up to an AT guy and get shot to shit. But we're still seeing fire coming through. I love the lightning and the snowstorm, by the way. And we still have some pretty far skirmishes here. Uh, just as Blue Force is starting to close the gap here, we still have Bob as unconscious, and we also have T5 Bay and French, uh, out in position over here. That's Ground Command, I think his, uh, 2IC. Yep. Uh, actually, that's Platoon Medic, because Dingo is 2IC. And, I mean, it's, it's still anyone's game, but I'd be giving the advantage to Blue Four right now, just based off the current PvP and the fact that these AT guys cannot seem to land an RPG shot even when the Vix are being stagnant. So one of the Vix just took a little more damage. That's uh, That might be the already wounded triple one seven. It's got a broken wheel. You can see it's right axle exposed, but we might see Dust here come in, get Prozzy and Risen killed. Prozzy is unconscious, but he wakes back up. Some heavy machine gun fire coming in. Prozzy trying to climb out. Dust die, if he's smart, he's gonna come in this doorway and tap him in the head. There it is. And that knocks out Risen. Prozzy has none the wiser here. And unfortunately, he's about to get tapped by Dust. So that is a nice two for one special that Dust just got. And uh, hopefully he'll get those double taps. Risen waking back up as Dust leaves. Dust! And Dust is opting to bandage himself. Always double tap, ladies and gentlemen, because just because you knocked him out doesn't mean it's over. Meanwhile, we're seeing a little bit of a medical situation going on as they try to bring Vito back up. And Prozzi's also woken back up. So Dust now coming in here, gets the double tap on Prozzi. Risen is still alive, though. He could go avenge his brother. You got to hear those reload sounds. Oh, if I heard those reload sounds, I would have ran out there immediately. Instead, going for a grenade throw misses it. Now he's going to give away his position. But looks like Dust is none the wiser. Come on, Risen. You got to crawl out there and get him. 
Send in goat teams. Harry Hero, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub, my man. I hope you keep enjoying the operations. Hope you get a kick out of this Friday Night Fight stream. And I hope you get a kick out of this one. So Risen now coming around. Uh, we just saw Maddo get shot by... Uh, Audrey Hotto just got shot by something. Don't know what that was about. And Dust uh, easily dropping Risen because he came around where he was set up. I get the coming around, but eh, I don't know. It's hard to speculate what's on their mind. I guess because he knew he got shot from that angle, he was trying to be cheeky and come around. But in reality, Dust was uh, busy hitting the guys over here. Audrey Hotto unfortunately going down. Uh, I guess got picked off by something. I don't know what, though. I hope he gets medicked up, though, because he is such a good player. And we have Dingo and Fred that have pushed right up to this cash. They could take this cash out from right under Op 4's nose because Op 4 is too busy focusing on what's in front of him. Luso, he is the platoon commander. He uh, is pushing back, looking for a potential back cap. But Op 4 has pulled off of this position. Uh, and Blue 4 is now coming in, led by Scandi Recon. I don't see any demo in here, though, for any potential traps. So that is unfortunate. Maybe it's on the top. No, we do have some bandages on top yet. There is the 15 minutes remaining call, so it is a 50-round match. But uh, timing-wise, it is still pretty uh, even here. Sorry for that white flash here. And we have Striker here living up to his name. He has stolen a triple one seven. That could turn it around for Op4 here. He's going to back off. I don't know why those guys dismounted that Vic. That was a really dumb call, but he could get out. And double tap. We have the other triple one seven coming up now. Striker now opening that door. Oh, they could he could knock out the other triple one seven with this. And he's pushing Tarnfall's body out too. But he goes the other direction. <laughs> I love it. Audrey Hado still down, but 2-6 got double tapped. Devincer might try to pick up Audrey Hado, but he is in one of the newer down animations. But Striker is going to just leave with his bounty here. And uh, this southern push is falling apart. We did just have Dingo die. Uh, I guess he was trying to come up to the cache. And uh, Luso camping that one position. Where did Dingo die? Dingo died on the corner over here. Looking for that cash. Wombat, I think, took him out. I'm going to switch to night vision for the rest of this because it's a little bit cleaner because I think it's getting a little darker here. Mountain shooting at his rear, I guess, thinking he sees something. And I'm going to take a sip of water. So Striker switching to the gunner. Donner is now going to drive, and Op4 has successfully stolen a triple one seven. Meanwhile, we have Dust now coming up. He's gotten those two kills, hunting the rest of TSB with STS. And this is where TSB will die. Slushy, uh, nope, he's still alive. Um, oh God, it's fish in a barrel. Dusty getting shot dead. Yes. All right. Now they just got to deal with STS. Grenade gets thrown in, but it bounces out the other doorway. And we have a machine gun now firing into the compound. STS almost knocking himself out with his own grenade. He's trying to aim his gun in here to see what he can see. Uh, gets the rear shot on the Vincer here. And there's a machine gun also suppressing Slashy here. But Roos is watching this area. He gets shot at immediately. Now machine gun's got to be careful because he's suppressing the friendlies. I like how STS is using this open doorway. Uh, but Russ still factoring out here. And Russ spots him through the window and gets the shot. Nice. How many kills is Russ at? That was his first kill. Nice, but that might also not include the amount of downs he's gotten. And Op4 shooting at their own dude right there. And Op4 also doing a nice counter attack here, knocking out some of the blue four guys. But we see this cash now cooking off. Uh, explosive went ah, uh, yeah. So there's some satchels right here, but I think that was the trap that Op4 made. But that's that's done. 
Yeah, so I think they're going for a building knockout. You don't always want to rely on that, though. Just putting the satchel charge in here would have done a lot more damage. So that is unfortunate. But now Blue Fork can now pedal to the metal down to that position. There is about 11 minutes remaining. Op4 has a pretty decent defensive line here. Fred, I think, is trying to just find a way to get some licks in. Uh, but they don't know specifically where this cache is. And I also want to see what Op4 does with that stolen triple one seven. But Blue Four's uh, flank right here is unfortunately done for. Audrey Hado has bled out sadness and i think they're gonna try to stabilize devincer uh maybe or they're thinking that he's dead so fred is the marksman it's a bit close i hope he's called in that he's friendly though i'd hate to see op for try to blow him up but i think they're firing gls at their uh commandeered striker Striker has driven right off. How did they not see Fred? I guess it's the driver's off day because they don't have third person. So Fred catching a little bit of a lucky break there, but he should know now that uh, there is a stolen vehicle working with uh, Op4 here. So Blue 4, a lot of guys to maneuver here, but... Oh, and then we have a Bravo. I didn't even notice those guys doing a wide maneuver around. Uh, definitely Blue 4 has that numbers advantage, but under 10 minutes remaining, uh, it's going to be close. Either way, if Op4 can hold in that small amount of time, they can do really well. But yeah, Fred is... Uh, oh, he's getting shot at by the open window area that uh, Platoon HQ is using. Again, I love that spot. And Fred pulling him back. Uh, looks like popping a smoke grenade right here. No, it's a regular grenade in case he's getting run up on. And he's going to crawl around under the light trying to find a better position. So, meanwhile, TSB rallying with a few extra guys here. None of them are medics, though, so they're probably not going to get Devincer back up. And then we have Tarnfolk and Jello. Uh, they are working on a guy down here. So, maybe if they stabilize um, Devincer, uh, Jello will be able to get Tarnfolk up, and then they can get another guy up, because everybody is going to count for this. But look at the massive spread of blue four guys that are coming down. But again, it only takes two guys to do that flank with what we saw in that last round to uh, even it out and win it for their team. So Fred, we have sneaking in here. He's going to be very, very cautious. Unfortunately, Jonathan saw him, and uh, that is it for Fred. Uh... I assume Jonathan's going to run up and get a double tap here. Instead, firing a GL, that's just going to put more damage on Fred. Decrease the likeliness of him waking back up. Oh, speaking of wake back up, Fred wakes back up. That was unlikely because, you know, two GLs to the back usually would do sufficient damage to prevent it. But I've seen guys that were on the verge of drowning uh, wake back up. There was a... Uh, there was an op uh, a few weeks ago where that happened. Lucid uh, getting shot dead as he tried to fire at a uh, triple one seven here. Is there any AT remaining? I don't see any op for AT. I know Keek had some, but I don't see any prepped in his launcher. If Blue Four figures it out and keeps doing those runs, they could do a lot of damage here. But I think they're trying to track the other triple one seven. That's a big ouch. So one triple one seven trying to chase the other. Uh, do these guys have AT? No, they do not. But they might know that that's a hostile triple one seven here. Fred's still sneaking around in this building. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Kiki is, uh, or it would be, uh, Kakuda. Kakuda, uh, is dead. Never mind. <laughs> uh, uh, Fade is trying to flank around to try to find Fred. Or at least make sure that he's dead. Uh, this triple one seven pushing out way ahead. Uh, these guys, meanwhile, pulled into a ditch to do some repairs. So that triple one seven is not going to be able to find them. And we also have, uh, Twig Kane, who is the marksman. He is uh, trying to triple time back into the AO to maybe shoot some of the blue four guys in the back of the head, which would be a really good thing to do uh, to help thin out blue four's numbers. How many kills is Twig Kane on? Twig Kane's only on one. I think Goatland's still alive, though. 
He's been a major MVP for this with four kills, but getting behind a lot of blue four guys. And now he's trying to line up some shots on Scandi Recon. So really good rock position here. He's got himself really well concealed. Gives up on that position though. Might get spotted out of position by Yander though. And instead, he is shot at by some of the dudes up here. This is some remaining Delta teams, because that was a 762 gun. And now you're seeing French charging a triple one seven, realizing that that's not friendly. And he might have just been shot unconscious here. Ouch. So, uh, silver lining, up for he was able to bait out platoon HQ and shoot him out. He wakes back up though. And he's quickly going to try to get out of that position. So, yeah, that was not called in that they lost one of those triple and sevens they were taken by enemies. So, big ouch right there. Meanwhile, Fred pushing around, trying to get some more licks in. But now he has got Scandi Recon pushing. Nemesis has gone down, possibly by Hazard. But he is now awake. You see a little bit of blood right there. And Fred has got knocked unconscious again by Lusoed from the same spot. Hazard, uh, Nemesis also got knocked out again, I think by Hazard, uh, through that little open door where we're seeing some more shots going out. Uh, M going right into, uh, that firing line and getting knocked out. Five minutes remaining. This is going to be close. It's going to fall to the PvP. So far, Op4 has been doing a good job, but that can change in the blink of an eye. Golton still unconscious. I think he woke back up. Uh, but that triple one seven is going to come back in, and it could do some significant damage here. But it's being chased by the other triple one seven, and you're hearing that 50 cal firing. They are trying to kill the crew out. No, they're fine with 762. There's the 50 cal they need to use. Uh, it's going behind, trying to at least kill Nafs. Doesn't get the kill there. Uh, Gunner has just been shot out. Driver's still alive, though. He's trying to back up to possibly ram it into the other 7117. Flares going off as well. Russ pushing in. Uh, shooting at Cyrus, being doing a little bit of a miss PID right there. Um... He's at two kills now. Might catch Jonathan on position. No, he goes down. Should have used that Matt team gun to blow the building up. And uh, Triple One Seven has successfully shot out everyone in that other Triple One Seven. Uh, Triple One Seven. Twig King coming around trying to find some marksman shots. He's not going to find anyone at that angle at least. Yuri going down. Flying Finn pushing around. I'm switching to regular vision now to look at this merry little winter wonderland. Uh, Lusode on the top. Finn pushing in, trying to shoot at Jonathan, gets knocked out by Lusode on that top roster. Fade now running in, three minutes, 45 seconds remaining, but that triple one seven is going to pop up and possibly start spraying this building down with 50 cal. Yander also crawling up, Finn waking back up, getting a double, uh, getting a kill on, I already forgot his name. Uh, but unfortunately, the cache has been destroyed by the triple one seven because it was partially exposed. And that is the game. Blue four. I'm not going to call it a clutch because just look at the numbers here. If Op4 won, it would have been a good clutch. But wow. Wow. Oh, wow. TSB subverting my expectations. there, doing a lot better and able to uh, take a scenario where they were about to be uh, in circle instead getting the encirclement on that Charlie squad. And then from there, just Blue Fort kept that PvP going and it was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. We're going to go up, listen to local comms here. I'm not going to do a raid we'll be uh, running, because we're going to be uh, back in about an hour and 10 and, uh, minutes. Yeah. Uh, VNA event will start in an hour. If you guys have any feedback, please put... All right, guys, so uh, that is not going to be it for me because, again, we'll be back in an hour and 10 minutes. I'm going to take a small break and uh, just relax for a little bit. Maybe uh, try the game Among Us with a few friends. I just have to make sure I get that downloaded. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Otherwise, cheers, and uh, hopefully I'll see you an hour for the NA branch of Friday Night Fights. Take care.